Good day, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the Voice of Reason. And before we jump into the ongoing war between the Russian Federation and Ukraine, I felt it prudent to uh, jump over and uh, talk about the ongoing conflict between Hamas and Israel. Now look, this isn't so much as a, a conversation about Israel and Hamas. This is more or less my view on the situation. Now, obviously from reading some of the comments in the comment section, some folks believe that I support what they would define as Zionism. Now, I will say that my way of life, my culture, where I live, who I associate with, is probably more conducive, more akin to secularism and folks living in what would be modern-day Israel, Tel Aviv, Haifa, kind of that Western way of life. I do not believe that Islam, especially the different facets of Islam that exists, the more orthodox or radical elements of Islam, which is a significant part of that religion. A very significant part. And I just don't fall into that crowd. Don't believe in it. Obviously, they have their own culture, they have their own country, and they can stay in their own country and live their own life. But when they, radical Islamists, come here to where I live, they tend to start changing things or trying to start changing things that, look, that looks much different than a normal way of life here in the West, especially where I live. It's not normal. It's different. It's disturbing. And I'm just being honest with you. I would say that if I go into a Jewish community, maybe not Orthodox, it is not as radical. It is not as radical. Now, what's going to happen outside of how I feel and what I see and what I believe, which is really irrelevant, it's just that, it's my personal opinion, doesn't matter. But what is going to happen in the Middle East? Well, it's not going to be good. You have three religions. Well, I would say you have one very old religion that's in excess of 4,000 years old, Judaism. You have Christianity, 2,000 years old. And then you have what I believe is essentially a somewhat old cult centered around a cult of personality that existed 600 years after Christ. Now, these beliefs, Judaism, Christianity, and finally, the ones who submit, very difficult for these people to coexist, especially with 
the radicalism that continues to raise its ugly head. Even within the belief system of those who submit the Sunni-Shia divide. They could turn on each other in a heartbeat and it could be cataclysmic. It will be cataclysmic and it has been cataclysmic if you look at what happened in Iraq. Horrible situation. Nightmare on planet Earth. And it's not going to stop. All those ingredients for that kind of turmoil, what we have seen inside of Iraq, the fighting that is taking place right now between Israel and the Islamic Arabs living in what is the Gaza Strip in the West Bank, none of that is going to stop. It is eventually going to end with a cataclysmic event. I imagine at one point, or at some point, one side will wipe the other side out. It's going to come to that eventually. There's not going to be peace. You can see things continuing to escalate. Now, the big problem with those who submit is its origin story. It was created, the faith-based system of those who submit to Muhammad, the quote-unquote prophet. He was a warlord. He was a military leader. And at some point, he felt and believed that the polytheist society that existed in what is now Arabia needed to end. So, lo and behold, he decides to take elements of Christianity and Judaism and essentially create his own faith those who will submit. And at the time of his death, he had about 700 followers. Am I wrong on that number? Someone can correct me if I'm wrong. Not a massive army, but an army of of about 700 tribalistic Arabs, from the desert, running around, you shall submit, or we're going to whack your head off. And if we don't whack your head off, well, you're going to give us some money. An extortionist, cultist. That's what it looks like to me. If if it's something different to you, then, then God bless you. But that's just the way it is. For me, the voice of reason. Now, <clears throat> again, where does this end? It's going to end at some point. It may end 20 years from now. It may end 100 years from now. It may end 300 years from now. But there's going to be an end game to this, eventually. Eventually. And I don't see it being a peaceful endgame. I don't see how it it can be. If you look at the rise of the Islamic State, you look at the fighting that took place in Iraq, between Shia and Sunni. And both sides did incredibly horrible things to each other. And if you think that 
the retaking of Mosul was the end of something like the Islamic State, you are fooling yourself. You are absolutely fooling yourself. You could see that raise its ugly head again. You could see within the Shia community, you could see that become much more radicalized as well. We as as humans, human beings, we have created a cataclysmic situation in the Middle East through humanity's need to have faith in something. Whether your faith is as a Jew, whether your faith is as a Christian, whether your faith is a Sophilist, whether your faith is in Shia, Islam, those who submit, Alawite, Druze, Christian. Humanity has created a cocktail for absolute disaster. It cannot end any other way. The bridge, the gulf, is too wide. The only other way out would be some sort of reformation that occurs, especially within the faith of those who submit, But that's not going to happen. I see it becoming more and more radicalized. And there's a lot of different things causing that to happen, a lot of different issues. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter where the voice of reason stands on this issue. Just understand this with absolute certainty. This is going to end in a cataclysmic way. It is going to be a cataclysmic outcome. Whether both sides get nuclear weapons, and it it could also look much different than the way it does now. Watch Egypt. Egypt is very important. Egypt is going to become a very unhappy place. It could happen in five years. It could happen in 50 years. You have a lot of humanity that live in really appalling conditions. And that is going to explode. But again, it doesn't matter in terms of what is happening now. I think what is happening now in terms of the fighting that is taking place between the Jewish state of Israel and Hamas, this is small potatoes. What could happen and what in all probability is going to happen in the future is going to be of biblical proportions. You are going to see death and mayhem and mass exterminations on a scale of unprecedented ferocity. That's where we're heading, and in all probability it's going to happen, unless there's some sort of reformation, and I don't see that happening. I don't see that happening at all. I see the divide here in the United States. 
this clash of civilizations, this clash of cultures that are so different and have radically different viewpoints in terms of how the world should work. It's my way or the highway. On both sides of the coin. So it doesn't matter. It is what it is and it will continue to happen. And it's going to get a lot worse. Much, much worse. Again, this faith-based mega cocktail of destruction exists in this part of the earth. And it's not going away. And it will probably detonate much, much worse than even what we're seeing right now. Now back up to the uh, conflict, the war that is taking place between the Russians and the Ukrainians. Uh, Overnight, the Russians attacked the energy infrastructure of Ukraine. Apparently, it was a very successful strike or series of strikes that has damaged the ability of the Ukrainian state to operate arms factories and then obviously decrease the morale of the uh, the Ukrainian people. And that will continue. We continue to see the Russian breakout to the north-northwest of Donetsk, northwest of Adivka. That will uh, continue. We continue to see the saber rab- rattling of the possible deployment of uh, nuclear weapons by the Russians at some point. The Russians are telegraphing right now, hey, look, we're willing to do this. If push comes to shove, they will use tactical nuclear weapons. That's what they're saying. And you might want to listen to them. Now, is that going to come within the confines of the conflict that we're seeing now, or will it come within the confines of a more larger conflict, actually involving NATO forces on the ground moving into Ukraine? It's probably what's going to happen. I know, look, this was a depressing video, but it's the truth. It's what's happening. It's what's happening right now on the earth. And it's, uh, as I've talked about before, it's what we do. It is what we as humans do. It's in our nature. More to come. As always, have a good day.